Okay, hello everybody and welcome to the uh, Future Urban Ventilation Network seminar series. I'm Matteo Carpentieri and I'm one of the co-investigators in this uh, network funded by UKRI and, and NERC. So for more information about the network uh, and its aims, please uh, have a look at the website, which is uh, BritainCity.org. Uh, and as usual, before we start, a few uh, housekeeping notes. If you have questions, I'll try to collect all of them, uh, all the questions from Megan uh, uh, at the end. So please write your question in the chat. Keep yourself on mute. Uh, during the during the talk and of course the usual stuff respect each other participant contributions uh, and uh, be aware that this um, this seminar is being recorded so if you don't want to be recorded please don't uh, share your video um, having said so the speaker today is Megan Davis Wikes from the uh, University of Cambridge and uh, she will be talking about models for natural ventilation, such windows and cross ventilation. So I'll stop sharing my screen and uh, Megan, please go ahead. Uh, hopefully you can see my slides. Yes. Great. Okay, so yeah, I thought I'd share some work um, I've done with uh, various people on uh, natural ventilation. So this is work done with my PhD student, Gail Kemp, um, and also with Al Khasa, Nohela, and Paul Linden um, from DAMT. So um, some students and then Paul. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go through two examples of kind of some mathematical models for natural ventilation. Um, the first model uh, looks at the effects of temperature differences on cross ventilation. So we have really good models for cross ventilation and we have really good models for exchange ventilation. So ventilation driven by temperature differences. Um, but it's quite interesting when you combine these two things together, um, there's sort of some, some nice sort of subtleties in how you do that. Um, at the moment, it's quite often done by kind of either looking at which number is bigger and picking that one, or um, sometimes uh, you kind of add pressure differences and take the square root, and uh, it's actually a bit more nonlinear than that. And then the second, I'm going to talk very shortly about some work that I'm doing with, uh, with Gail and Paul on uh, how sash windows work. Um, they're very common. Um, and there's some really nice fluid dynamics associated with them. Okay, so first question, what are the effects of temperature differences on cross ventilation? So uh, you can um, describe the relative Im importance of wind and temperature on ventilation using a fruit number. So the fruit number is equal to the wind speed divided by the square root of G prime H, where little h is the window height and G prime is related to the temperature difference. So the temperature difference, coefficient expansion, and G is uh, just uh, gravity. And I studied this using um, some experiments. So I had this water flume, it was pretty huge. It was like two meters wide, almost a meter tall. And there's this little model room inside the flume. So this is a photograph of that. Um, and there are kind of little windows in the front and back. And, and I can change the temperature difference uh, between the inside of the box and the outside, and I can also have a uh, flow going past it. So firstly, let's just see uh, what happens when you have just a temperature difference in um, between the inside and outside of the room. So um, I'm afraid this video is a bit choppy, but hopefully you can see um, that, that you have air flowing in through cool air flowing or blue fluid flowing in through the bottom of the window and out through the top of the window. Um, and it's very stratified, you know, you've got this layer of dyed fluid which has remained inside the model room um, and that's also still warm um, and that's to do with the kind of stratification, the fact that uh, warm air wants to sit at the top. This of course is a fluid number of zero because the wind speed u is just zero. Um, 
And you can model this using uh, the theory of exchange ventilation. So first um, described by Brown and Solverson in a paper in 1962, so kind of a while ago. Um, and this uh, is basically based around the idea that inside your room, you've got sort of warm air and one density. Outside your room, you've got cool air and a different density, which is larger. So your pressure gradients are different either side of the window. And this uh, pressure gra difference will lead to a flow, which you can um, use Bernoulli, uh, which essentially is just energy conservation uh, to model. So that gives us a speed U with height Z away from some interface where the pressure inside and outside the room has become equal. And then if you integrate this velocity profile, you get the flow rate through the window. So that gives you this expression here. So CD is just a constant. A is the area of the window and then square root of G prime H. That's that same thing as before, like the height of the window and the, um, the kind of G prime is related to the temperature difference um, between the room. Right, so here's um, some more experimental results. So this is that mean temperature in the room. So I measured that using kind of a, a, a vertical line of, of thermocouples and divided by the initial temperature difference. And as you see, all of these have collapsed onto a line when I rescale by um, a uh, exchange flow time scale. Um, and this is sort of different colored lines are different temperature, different initial temperature differences. Um, and I've got two models here. So the first model is one that was come up with, uh, Paul um, Linden first came up with in 1990. And they assumed that um, that the inflow through the window was mixing perfectly with all the fluid below the top of the, off top of the window. Um, but that doesn't quite happen, like it's not mixing perfectly. So here is a second theory that I came up with, um, which I've called the zero mixing theory, where any fluid that comes through the window, it just immediately kind of sinks to the bottom of the room and fills up a layer. Um, and of course, you know, neither of those two, these, those are like two extremes and our, my experiments sort of sit quite nicely in between these two models. They like provide a, two limits on uh, what you expect to see. Okay, so what about if we add a bit of wind to our exchange ventilation? So here the fruit number is 0.62. So there's a bit of wind, um, but not, uh, not so much that the buoyancy isn't still dominating. So you can still see you have inflow through the bottom, outflow through the top, but, but the kind of flow changes as you go along where like you, more and more you get kind of unidirectional flow, like one way flow through this window and one way flow through this window. And again, it's very stratified. And then at kind of late time, um, you get kind of a uh, very slow erosion of this interface by the flow coming through the window. Uh, okay, so what about if you, uh, if you increase the wind even more? So now it's wind dominated. Fruit number is bigger than one, which essentially means that um, the wind, uh, the effect of the wind is, is greater than the effect of the temperature. Um, and now um, we just have unidirectional flow through the front and unidirectional flow through the back, even from the very start of the experiment. Um, and late time is sort of similar, like we see um, erosion of this stable two layer stratification by this flow through the window. Um, and it happens a, a lot quicker than, um, than the lower fruit number case. Right. So then the last example is what happens when you just have wind. So now there's no temperature difference between the inside of the room and the outside. Um, and in this case, we essentially just remain kind of well mixed throughout the behavior. So we just have this kind of well mixed um, inside of the room, uh, which gradually kind of decreases in concentration. Right. Okay. So the well mixed case is like pretty straightforward. You, it's just a exponential decay. So if we rescale, um, uh, this is the mean concentration in the room compared to the initial concentration. And this is the time divided by the wind time scale 
but that's given by the volume of the room CD, which is like a constant, the same as before, which uh, describes the contraction of streamlines through a window. Um, a is the area of the window, U is the wind velocity, and we see it's like a very good fit to that model. But what happens if we add just like a little bit of a temperature difference? So it's still wind dominated. Um, the food number is still bigger than one. But now um, we have a bit of buoyancy. And what happens is the buoyancy very slightly suppresses the ventilation rate. So if you look at these velocity profile, profiles down in the bottom uh, left, we've got um, the red is when you have like wind only. We're sort of this is the idealized velocity profile through the window. It's just constant. And as we increase the temperature difference between the room and uh, the outside, the warm room air wants to flow out of the top of the window. So we get this kind of distortion of the velocity profile. It's kind of almost like moving towards like what you would see for an exchange profile. And uh, of course, the, the flow through the window, the total Q is going to be the integral of these velocity profiles. And so the reason why, as you increase the, um, the, the or decrease the fruit number, you increase the temperature difference, you, you still get almost the same amount of flow is because when you integrate this black profile, um, it comes out to a basically the same as the red profile. So if we, the, the kind of actual correction, the flow through the window divided by the flow you were getting when you just had wind um, is described by this function of fruit number. And so as we decrease the food number, so we increase the temperature difference, we like slightly decrease the flow rate, but it's only like 6%. That's essentially nothing in the grand scheme of things. Um, the sort of levels of accuracy you expect to get when you're kind of measuring ventilation through a window in a real building. Um, this is like very small. So essentially you can model the flow rate as being just um, dependent on uh, just the wind driven part of it. So, so here's um, again the difference in temperature between the inside and outside divided by the initial temperature um, and time. And if we rescale the time axis by the wind time scale given by this, um, then uh, we can uh, plot uh, just an exponential decay. But notice this exponential decay is subtly different. So there is an effect of temperature, but it's not to change the flow rate through the window. What it's doing is it's stratifying the room. So your effective room job volume is just that kind of lower layer below the top of the windows. So, uh, and then this late time kind of stuff here, this is all that kind of late time erosion of the upper layer that we saw um, in the video that I'll talk about in a moment. Okay, so that was all wind dominated ventilation. So when it's mostly wind, but you've got a bit of a temperature difference, uh, or in other words, the food number is bigger than one. Um, and we can also look at the case when the flow is buoyancy dominated. So the food number is between zero and one. So here, like on the left, we've got the velocity profile at the window when you just have buoyancy, when it's just exchange flow. And as you increase the temperature, the increase of wind velocity, um, keeping the kind of temperature difference constant, then you're kind of moving across uh, towards this profile here on the, uh, for the fruit number of one. Um, and again, you can describe the ratio of the flow rate Q through the window with the flow rate you would, you would get if you just had temperature difference, if you just had exchange flow. And it's a function of the fruit number. And here the effect is a bit stronger. Like when you go from no temperature difference, so no wind, to um, some wind, you can increase the, um, the uh, flow rate by like 40%. So it's like not, not quite so negligible. Um, and notice this is like, I'm calculating the velocity profiles and then integrating them. And that's different from what currently gets, gets done, which is um, you take the, the pressure, um, pressure difference due to wind, you take the pressure difference due to temperature, you just add them together and take the square root and that's your velocity scale. Okay, um, so if we wanted to model the uh, buoyancy dominated ventilation, so fruit number is between zero and one, we can use a fruit number correction. 
So here's the exchange photo time scale I kind of mentioned earlier. Um, it, it depends on like the volume of the lower layer, so the volume that's below the top of the window. Um, this co coefficient CD, the area of the window, and that square root g prime h, which is like our buoyancy velocity scale. If we rescale just by this, we don't get quite a perfect collapse. But if we add a fruit number correction, um, the collapse is much better. And then again, we have our like uh, kind of bounding theories of the well mixed theory and the zero mixing theory. Um, and then the last thing to kind of look at is this late time behavior, this sort of um, sort of erosion of the upper layer that we saw in the video. So if the fruit number is large, then there are going to do two competing timescales. Like you've got this wind driven ventilation time scale, which is the time it takes to get rid of this pale layer below the top of the windows. And you also have this shear driven time scale, which is like how quickly can the wind coming through this window remove this upper layer. And that sort of essentially depends on like geometric um, things to do with the, the room and also the kind of rate at which this is eroded the entrainment rate EC, which depends on like how quickly that, what, what the flux is. Um, and so if the shear, um, so you're looking for the condition where the shear timescale is much, much less than the wind timescale. So that kind of layer gets removed really quickly, which is equivalent to this expression here, that the entrainment rate is greater than some kind of non-dimensional parameter that depends on the geometry of the room. And this entrainment rate is going to be some function of the fruit number of like how strong the stratification is compared to how fast the flow rate is. Um, so there's going to be some kind of critical fruit number above which it just looks like a well mixed room, like, like kind of the wind only case. Um, and below that fruit number, it's going to be more like this situation where you remove the lower layer and then you have a slow removal of this upper region. So that's the end of that, that first model. So like, um, what are the effects of temperature differences on cross ventilation? So you see there's like two regimes. There's a kind of wind dominated regime and buoyancy dominated regime. And in the wind dominated regime, like the flow rate Q doesn't really change. Um, but if the fruit number is low enough, you get stratification and a kind of effectively a reduced room volume. Uh, for buoyancy dominated, you can just model it as exchange flow, but with this fruit number correction. Okay, so I've just got a little short bit on um, sash windows. This is work I've been doing more recently. Um,